<laughs> awesome. I think we are live. Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to this afternoon's, or I guess, depending on where you are in the world, if it's uh, where you are, Carmel, it's still morning, isn't it? You're in Perth? Yes, it is indeed. It's 11 a.m. Okay, awesome. Well, we're in the afternoon here in Queensland. So hello to everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, I am really, really excited to introduce you to the communication queen. We have a communication specialist with us, Carmel Murphy. Thank you so much for joining us, Carmel. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I'm delighted to be here. Awesome, awesome. So um, I'm just going to um, read a little bit of your bio, a few things that really jumped out of me. Um, you've obviously got such a vast experience in what you do in leadership and management and mentorship. So I'm sure there's so much you're going to share with us today that's going to um, really be of high value to everybody in the group. Um, I love how you are an expert at helping people communicate their message um, because you know, we're all, some of us in the group, we're um, business owners, some of us are wanting to um, share things that are of huge value to us that we feel can help other people. Um, and I think that is a real missing link for a lot of people is really di directly communicating that message in the right way to have it heard in the right way. So I'm mm. looking forward to hearing more um, about that from you in a minute as well. Um, and I also loved what really jumped out for me is how you're an expert in human behavior strategies, because yeah. human behavior is um, a really really awesome subject of interest of mine so um, I'll ask you a little bit about that I'm sure in a minute too but yeah. first of all could you just introduce yourself tell us a little bit about who you are your background and um, so we can get to know you sure sure thank you so much I love the things that jumped out at you because they were meant to so that's great <laughs> um, a bit like yourself I've a funny accent so I'm from Ireland and um, very briefly, timeline, I'm from a little town in Ireland and I'm the youngest of five daughters who lived in a two bedroom house, two parents that were married for 65 years. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it was such, such a, an amazing life, really, when you look back wow. on it. But um, I've worked in hospitality is, since Jesus was a child is the way I best describe it. <laughs> and <laughs> fell into hospitality when I was 16 because I didn't know what else to do. And I remember even then saying um, the managers and supervisors going, I want to have a job like them because they seem to do nothing. <laughs> uh, big mistake. So over the years, I escalated and I, you know, kind of worked my way up in hospitality. And I came to Australia it was when I worked it up even more. So I did. I went into management. I went into upper management um, I, I ran so many pubs and restaurants for big companies as in a franchise versus in the casino area here in Perth. I ran Paddy Hannon's, which was an Irish pub. Ah. So I've been all over Australia as well in terms of I lived in Melbourne, then I lived in country Victoria, then South Australia, and then drove across the Nullarbor. The real truth of driving across the Nullarbor was that um, I put my kids in the car and I just drove. I split for my ex-husband and I just drove. Wow. I had a sister in Perth and I drove for four days with my children, <laughs> um, not knowing anyone other than my sister. But that said, I think the resilience that we have and that we learn through all of these challenges in life and then yeah. went back to hospitality, went back to what I knew. Always wanted to do something, but went back to what I knew. And about 10 years ago, I had left my hospitality job. I trained as a trainer in hospitality. And I will never forget, talk about defining moments, going down to the human resources guy at the time. And I was running an Irish bar. And I said to him, right, I'm trained as a trainer. I've spent 18 months, you know, getting my qualification. How can we go about putting me in as a trainer? And he hummed and hawed. And then he said, can I speak off the record? And I said, yes, sure. He said, you're too good at what you do. You'll never get a job as a trainer here. Oh. And I went, I had three kids, but nearly forgot to mention them. I wanted to have weekends off. I didn't want to be working 60, 70 hours a week anymore and weekends and public holidays. So I left and I had no idea what I was going to do. <laughs> and for a single mom of three children, that was pretty scary. Yeah. And I got a knock on the door. I had a trust somewhere in me that, you know, I'll be okay. 
And I got a knock on the door from the recruitment agency that used to provide some staff for us and say, now that you've left, can you come over here and be a temp staff manager for 450 staff we had that we put out to all different areas at the time? It's like happy days. And I shortly became the state manager of the recruitment company then, ah. which was great. And I loved it. Again, another defining moment. We had 24 hour calls and, um, you know, you could ring us and say, I need a bartender. I need a chef. I had that phone. I had the state manager phone and I had my personal phone. And one night we'd have a list of people of who could work and who couldn't. This phone was going off the hook. They just it was in boom time. They needed so many staff. And because they couldn't get through on this phone because I was on it, they rang the state manager phone. And when they couldn't get through on those, they actually rang my personal phone. I remember <laughs> standing there crying and going, I literally have no more staff to give you. And I just, oh. something's got to change. So I went on a search and I found coaching. And that's what oh. I did is I actually, about 10 years ago, I started to uh, do life coaching. I don't use the term very much now. And the reason is I think coaching for me is just a uh, tool I have in my toolbox rather than me saying I am a coach if that makes sense yes. yeah because I think we're so much more than just that one thing yeah so and and then I started doing that and I started um, mentoring other coaches I started teaching them and it was always about communication when I started doing the coaching I went oh how can I help the people in hospitality so I started doing team building and um, leadership things throughout that so I was brought in to bring the leadership team together. And what I soon discovered that hospitality wasn't necessarily just where I wanted to be. And then I started spreading. And uh, over time, and especially in the last uh, four years now, so about almost four years ago, um, my darling sister passed away. And she had been ill for some time. At that time, I was actually working as a regional manager for a huge um, restaurant chain. And I remember I traveled a lot and I remember saying, I don't want to be in another state when somebody rings me to say that you're dead. And mm -hmm. I left that job as well. Mm -hmm. And she, for 15 months, she was ill, but she passed away. Um, and within six weeks, so did my dad oh, God. in Ireland. And it was like, holy guacamole, we've never had huge grief in this family. But something in that, and the reason I'm, I'm sharing that with you, and within 12 months, my mom passed too, oh, wow. was... Wow. Something really, I would say, broke in me. I think we go down into whatever. Um, mm. my, my sister was um, a year younger than I am now, or a year older than I am now, sorry. Right. And um, it really made, it makes you question your own mortality and you go, well, hang on a minute. She had all of, she had all her ducks in a row. She was going to retire. She was going to do this, that and the other. And I said, it's all gone. So what am I waiting for? So I stopped actually trying to pretend that, you know, one day, one day I'll do stuff. And I just started taking action. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year, I actually ran an event in Ireland in my hometown. It was something I'd always wanted to do. Oh. My only regret is that I waited till my parents had passed to do it. But that's OK. Mm -hmm. um, I did it in my hometown. I ran a retreat in there as well. So ever since then, I've just been on this kind of trajectory of, I'm not going to die with my song still in me. Mm, Action has to be taken. And, yeah. and that's why things have started to go like this. But one of the gaps I found was that trying to get the right message to the right person at the right time was a huge thing for me too. <clears throat> I didn't even know who I was talking to. <clears throat> we have this blanket of, I can help everybody. Well, yeah, yeah maybe you can. Would you need to decide on, you know, an inch wide and a mile deep? Isn't that what they say? Mm -hmm. So when you think right message, right person, right time, you can only control two of them. So when you start being known for the right message and talking to this one specific ideal client, the timing you can't control. So, you know, my ideal client's name is Mary, let's say. Um, I don't know when Mary's going to be ready to hear my message. But right. when she is, she'll know it's me. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you were forever talking about um texters if you were forever talking about texters you don't always need a texter when you have a texter you don't always need the texter yeah. but when i need a texter i remember your name because you've always been talking about bloody texters you know so, so that's 
Yeah, and that's what it is. That's why people go, oh my God, I can't just talk about one thing. So I became known as the avatar queen at one stage uh, because yeah. I really dug deep into who is it I'm talking to? Right. How can I find out what they're saying? And I found a really clear distinction on our, our two-day course we had on the weekend that really just encapsulated it all. It was communication is nothing to do with what you say. It's not what you say. Communication is what they hear. And I went, you know what? That's just so true. So we have to get into their mind to find out. And that's where the human behavior comes in because you start looking at, well, what kind of trends are there? How are people communicating? What's going on underneath the surface and doing the research there? Because when you can say something and you would know this, Gemma, yourself, when you can say something in your post and people go, oh my God, it's like you're inside my mind. It's like when your words become their thoughts, then you know you've got it. Yeah, absolutely. So now I live in Perth in Western Australia, a semi-little, small, I wouldn't say farm, but anyway, chickens, ducks and geese and grow all my own stuff. And I run Hello. online events. We have a membership. We run retreats and we run lots of meetups and about communication to the right person, right, right message and right time. I love it. Wow. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for sharing that. Connell. Wow. And what a journey you've had. And I love how you are so aware of your defining moments and the changes in your trajectory of your of your life and your career. And that's fantastic. And, and also really how you responded to major events in your life and how you've made them work for you. Um, and um, yeah, it's very, very inspirational how you're now kind of living a, a life on your terms and um, doing something you're hugely passionate about. You mentioned as well about how you started out, well, you're obviously teaching something now that you once, you know, was a huge pain for you. So you struggled mm. before communicating your message at the right time to the right person and now you've overcome that and you're teaching your strategies to other people um, yeah. and clearly can relate to your ideal client for that reason. So what is the biggest mistake people make then when they are trying to communicate their message? Because you, the, the analogy you gave was great too. Like are they, are people just trying to talk about too many things and not niche yeah. enough? Is that, is that yeah. what people struggle with? Spot on. Look, and, and at, at first that's what you do because you're kind of trying to find your way. You're trying to find where it is. So it's perfectly natural, but you need to do some market research you need to find out what it is they're saying and I've done some tests of using certain words and certain statements but they're ones that I've heard people say that would be kind of my ideal client and I did like I can't even tell you how many phone calls I did where you know I would give them something free but I would ask them certain questions and all I was trying to identify was the language they were using so you would know and I would know that's probably a highlighter, let's face it. However, but in Ireland or England, um, the text, what you call a texter here in Australia, we call it a marker. Yeah. Does it make it any different? But I need to know if I'm in the UK or Ireland that I need to say, I want you to buy this marker. Because if I say I want you to buy this texter, you'll be saying, what are you talking about? I know I, you want me right. to text who? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So, you know, and, and I didn't even I didn't even plan this um, example, but I think it's really an easy example instead of trying to go into the complexities of business. It's what language are they using? So some people for failure and, and I don't believe there is failure, but anyway, some people for failure were using that I stuffed up. And so I need to talk to them with that language, because if I'm not, they don't hear me. And we yeah. have a bias for um hearing what's familiar to us so we ha we we do a lot of deleting distorting and generalizing it's how our brain works i mean four million bits of information coming at us so we don't say oh that's a wall or that's a floor we just you know kind of put it in there it's already there we don't think of when we're driving hang on although if you have an injury like i have at the moment you do and um, you don't think about clutch accelerator and all that it all goes in so we kind of just generalize it yes that's driving yeah. So people do the same. So when we generalize it and we go on automatic pilot, unless something disrupts that or something comes in in somewhat familiar, we won't see it or hear it. So if you can disrupt somebody, you know, get them to stop scrolling or something enough with an image 
or a word or something that they go, oh, well, I haven't heard it put like that before. That makes them read some more. And then you start talking as if it was them talking to themselves. Pow. Man, they're in. Yeah. yeah. So makes true. Sense? I love that. Yeah, it does make sense. Absolutely. Um, and it just goes to show as well how, like you say, it's not the right, always going to be the right time. So delivering that message in different ways consistently over yeah. time is going to bring you in the people that are looking for you, right? Not just Absolutely. expecting people, I guess, to, to know that this is what you do because you've said it once or you've or it, yeah it's, it's, it's interesting how you've how you've put that and how you mentioned as well about communication not being really what you're saying it's really how they hear the message yeah and, uh, and that was huge for me it just kind of came in I went that's actually it yeah yeah it just makes it sense yeah communication it's, as well um, in every yeah area. well the, the biggest illusion about communication is that it's happened <laughs> <laughs> that, it's what, that, it's happened. that it's happened people think oh I told you it's like well no uh, I didn't hear it that way uh, ah yeah. Yeah. yeah okay oh awesome okay cool so what is um have you got a couple of top tips for anybody out there that is trying to I guess market their their message their business their um just a couple of I guess, general mistakes that people make where you can just give a couple of top tips for somebody that could maybe um, help them in their journey. Um, I guess mm. a little bit of an idea of the people that you work with, maybe Carmel, that the common struggles that they have when um, working. Well, one, on one of the biggest ones, thank you for that, is that people keep trying to reinvent the wheel. And I have a tendency to, even if the wheel has been reinvented 10 times, to try and reinvent it. So I get it. <laughs> the thing about it is there's four very um clear areas if you look in the likes of google and that sort of thing where people are already i call it the lucrative customer parade there are people there with their money i'm using this texture for everything today they're <laughs> they're walking along on a little queue with their money and they're already spending money with somebody so mm -hmm. one of those areas for example is about relationships so there's lots of people on this little um runway if you like um of about relationships so think about people that are on dating sites people that are trying to fix a broken relationship people that are trying to find it they're all very lucrative mm -hmm. so find out which of those four areas that you actually fit into and see what the others are doing and do something that's a little bit different but it'll be the same audience so you don't have mm -hmm. to try and educate this is one of the common mistakes is and I know one lady here in Perth in particular, she talks about a certain anatomy of um, the body, but she's trying to beat it into people and educate them what's wrong so that then she can help them and, you know, pay them for whatever. Mm. You can't educate people what's wrong. They are looking for an urgent problem. It's what I call the Panadol problem. If you go to a doctor and you've got a headache and you've got a cold and, you know, in these present environments, the first thing you want is you just want the Panadol to get rid of the headache. You may yeah. have an infection underneath it and he needs to do that, but you just, just give me the Panadol. So yeah. you need to know what is their Panadol problem? What are they typing into Google in the middle of the night when nobody's looking? Yeah. And it's not. Um, quite often people say, I'll help you with procrastination. I have never heard somebody wake up in the middle of the night and go, I got it. I'm procrastinating. That's what's wrong. <laughs> That's not what they do. They'll wake up in the middle of the night and they'll go, what's wrong with me? Why can't yeah. I make this work? Yeah. So you have to find that and meet them where they are. And mm. unfortunately, at times, people are putting out big promises out there. We sometimes have to meet the people with the promises they're used to hearing in a little mm. bit and then give them what they need. Mm. And you um, as the another, yeah. Pardon? You as the expert knows what they need, but then that can yes. come later. It's really what they're, they're, what's keeping them up at night, like you say, what they yeah. want. Yeah. Immediately. What's their Panadol problem? What's yeah. their problem in that moment that they need to be fixed? Yeah. And when you find that. The other big mistake is that everybody or people try and help everybody all the time. Right. And yeah. at first, Absolutely. I get that that's where it starts. But a really good place to start if you're really stuck is, Start with you three to five years ago. Right. That's clever. Because yes. 
And, and the reason I say that is because whatever problems you were having were not just your problems. Because somebody else would have been having them, you know, whether you're like I was, a, I was basically I was a broke single mom working 70 hours a week. Mm. Now, I would have told you I had no money to pay for anything, but obviously I found it because it became important to me to get out of that. And that yeah. was more important than the money I could find or not find. I mean, I left a, a good paying job with not knowing what the hell I was going to do. <laughs> yes. Because it became the when the pain gets enough, we will move. Okay. Yeah. So when you're meeting them at a pain point and that you resonate and they get your message because you're so clear on your message, the timing is right. Mm -hmm. I actually had on the two day course, one person in particular, because we have a membership group as well. And, um, you know, just told her what the membership group and her actual words were, that's a no brainer. And it's like, bingo. I hit yeah. all, the, all the points and everything. It was yeah. literally a no brainer. She like within yeah. two minutes had signed up to the membership. Yeah, amazing. That just tells me it's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah does that make sense? So it does. So true. And like you say, there's going to be people where it is going to be a no brainer, and there's going to be people that perhaps it's not right time for them or the right thing for them. So it's yeah. like being okay with not helping absolutely everybody. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And that, but do your homework on it and find out. Well, who was I? What kind of problems were I having? One of the things that I used to get a lot when I taught a lot more of Avatar, if you like, I did a lot of workshops on that, was, but Camel, if I narrow it down to one person, then all the other people won't get my help. Uh, and here's okay. the thing. Here's the thing with this that absolutely blows that out of the water. When you narrow it down to one person, they may have 10 problems. They may have 100, but let's just focus on 10. They may have 10 problems. So... You know, your ideal client may be, again, Mary, my ideal client. She may have all 10 of those problems, but Gemma may have two of them. And when the timing's right, she'll hear that I'm the person helping her with those two problems. Joseph might have one of them, but at that time, when the timing's right, my message is so clear, he knows I'm the person to help him. So it mm. actually widens your audience by getting so specific as if you were talking to one person. Mm. That's really well put. Mm -hmm. That's so clear. Oh, wow. Awesome. If anyone has any questions for Carmel, please do comment on the video. She's part of our group, so she can answer them um, for you. I'll just check as we're talking that there's nothing here. I know it always gets challenging on these because there's a 10 second lag as well, and you're trying to answer questions. And Yes, I'm just checking. But anyway, no, that's okay. We, um, yeah, we can keep checking them um, as the, the day goes on. Carmel, thank yeah. you. Where can people find you if they um, want to come and check you out or get in contact with you personally? Yeah, thank you very much. So Carmel Murphy, I'm all over Facebook or LinkedIn okay. or Instagram, wherever you want to go. <laughs> I also have a business page called The Communication Queen. Um, so you can hop on there. Uh, we run meetups and different things like that. So all the information is on there for those. We do have um, a meetup coming up in August. And yeah. look, when we're finished here, I'll put the link underneath um, the video, if that's okay. It's a free meetup, but it's yeah. about the five, the top five videos that you need to use in your business now to increase your revenue. Oh, so fantastic. we're going to go through the top. Yeah, the different because people struggle, struggle with topics. People struggle with going Facebook lives, but you can actually make some videos. But what kind of theme do you need to put them on? And um, yeah. how can you do those ones, whether it's about a problem or whatever it is? So we're going to go through those. I'm bringing Sarah in, who I work quite closely with, who's a copywriter. So we Amazing. get the language in and the visuals and those. So, yeah, I'll put the link in underneath that. Oh, awesome. And that's in August, Carmel, did you say? That's the 12th of August, yeah. It's on a okay. Wednesday evening. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And awesome. look, one thing I do with all my meetups is I record them all. So there is always an option of getting the recording as well. Wow, lovely. Yeah. That's so good. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing some of your wisdom with us. I've learned loads personally, and I'm sure people <laughs> watching will have done as well. Um, but please feel free, anybody, to get in touch with Carmel. Ask her any questions on this video. I should be more than happy to answer you. And um, yeah, we'll get your links, Carmel, and we'll pop them on the video for people to access. 
Cool. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having me here. And I love being part of your group. And uh, um, yeah, welcome. you've been very generous, Gemma. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carmel. Well, have an awesome day. It was lovely to chat with you and we'll see everybody later. Bye, everybody. You too. Bye for me. Bye-bye.